Well, welcome everybody. This is Troy Fuller with Making Money Mortgages Elite, a proven six-figure success formula. And today I want to share with you how to wholesale a note for profit and also how to find flip and profit from every note deal you find. And I want to welcome you to today's call. It's a it's an exciting call because we're going to share with you some things that nobody in the industry really wants to share with people getting started in the industry. Nobody in the industry really knows that how to do what it is I'm going to do and share with you here because I've never seen anybody else do it. So um, this is some proprietary type information in regards to one, how to find deals, but then on the other side of it, not even just finding them, what do you do with them after you find them? I mean, if you find a note deal, how do you get it under contract? How is it that you win the, um, or not necessarily win, but how do you, how are you awarded what, you know, the deal, you know, the deal, how do you overcome obstacles and objectives when uh, buying a note? And, and I talk with you about that because there's a realness to it. Okay. There's a, there's a truth to it. And so I'm going to share with you today how I'm able to close over 90% of the deals that come across my desk by showing you, actually showing you the inside working aspects of how to go about doing it, okay? How to go about doing it, how to dissect a deal and really dig in deeper versus just looking at it from a surface aspect, which is what 99.9% .9 of the people do, okay? They just, that's just what they do because that's what they're taught to do and they don't know anything better. And so I'm going to show you why it is that we have such a tremendous um, closing percentage as a whole uh, and with um, in inside of our company so let's go ahead and jump in here get started and uh, you know the, the number one question I've got here and let me boost this up hold on a minute here there we go um, all right number one question what if everything you've ever been told or believe about real estate investing is wrong at least for today's market conditions at least for today's market conditions. And what I mean by that, and I ask this question out loud to everybody, is I want to get you thinking. I want to get you thinking, you know, a lot differently than what you have been thinking. And the reason I say that is because unless you're thinking right now is producing a six-figure income, I'm going to show you a way of thinking that produces a six-figure income. Okay, and it's really very much out of the box thinking. It's very much a, a, a way of looking at things completely different than what is taught, what has been known, and what the masses are doing. Because doing what the masses are doing, you just keep getting the results that the masses keep getting. And what I mean by that is, not that it's not that it's horrific and not that it's terrible, but at the end of the day, if only 4.7% of Americans are making over 150000 a year, that leaves, what, 95.3% of the people are making less than 150000 a year? And if you're making, you know... It, it, you know, and that, that becomes that, that whole middle class bracket that gets kind of keeps getting beat up in a, in a number of different ways. Now, that's not, a, that's not a big number to hit, you know, 150,000 plus years. Not really a big number to hit. Although it may be if you're listening to this, we're listening to this. For music completely different than anybody prior to him. Hence the iPod. Hence the iPad. And then you get the Nano and all these other devices that centered, I mean, some of his first things that he came out was like the Nano. 
I, the iNano or iPod Nano or whatever it was. Just this little tiny square box that has music in it. That's it. That's it. He looked at music completely different than anybody else. Like, how can I deliver music different to the to the masses? And the masses jumped on board. And then it you know kind of spiraled out of control from there. And now he's got the you know iPhones, iPods, all that other stuff. And we won't go into that. But my point is of, of sharing that with you is, is he looked at it differently. He looked at it completely different. So did you know? So did uh, um, Bill Gates looked at the computer computer completely different than anybody prior to him. As a matter of fact, when he bought the rights to the Windows software, he bought it from IBM because IBM had thrown it in the trash. He would spent fifty thousand dollars on that software from IBM, and had purchased it, and then went to work in fine tuning it to be, you know, to be a startup Windows software for computers. Because IBM had thrown it in the trash, saying, "No, this won't work. We'll stick with DOS." Huge, huge mistake on IBM's part. But that was the truth. That was the absolute. IBM would be a huge powerhouse in the market space had they not have sold that to Bill Gates and had fine-tuned it to a higher level. So my point is, let's look at things differently in regards to real estate. And I'm not talking a brush over look. I'm not talking like let's look at things from the perspective of how can I make much, a lot more money than the next guy. Who cares about the next guy? And I don't mean that literally. I'm not saying that don't care about mankind. I'm saying it doesn't matter what he or she is doing. That's not putting money in your pocket. That's not changing your financial projection. That's not changing. That's not creating financial uh, financial freedom for you and your family. What they're doing is not putting. That's not helping you. What helps you is you thinking about things differently. And people often ask me, "Hey Troy, how did you get into notes? Why didn't you get into brick and mortar real estate?" Well, it's one simple answer. I wanted a proven model that centered around decades of success. Decades. And if you think about it, it goes back centuries of success. Because I wanted a model that took into consideration one that had the power to create longevity, financial longevity for myself and my family. Not that I wanted to keep grinding out 40-hour work weeks. But not that I wanted to create another company and make a bunch of money and then find something else to do. That was not the, that was not the objective. That was not the goal. The goal was to create long-term residual financial, a long-term residual financial future for myself and my family. That was it. It was pretty simple. It was pretty simple. And so I looked around and found something. I got into the space of real estate notes and mortgages because the, everybody else was flipping houses and you know being landlords and all this other stuff. And all I saw was misery. All I saw was frustration. All I saw was irritation. All I saw was a bunch of capital going out the window and dealing with a whole bunch of other people and managing a whole bunch of people. I came from an industry where I was already managing people. I had already figured out I want to do that. That was not my forte. That was not my ideal existence in life. So I said, okay, let's let's look at some something different. So as I did, I started looking into things at a deeper level. I started realizing the real people that were really making the the, the, the building bigger and bigger and bigger were the banks. Were the banks, the institutions. I didn't want to become a bank. I, one, I didn't have the capital backing to become a bank, but then that just led to more people again. Managing more people. When you look at a bank, you know you're, you're talking thousands of, of employees as a whole, and a lot of a lot of government bureaucratic red tape and, and all this other stuff. And that didn't that didn't appeal to me at all. No interest at all. But I'm like, okay, I like your model. Your model is you lend money, and you make money off of that money. Like, okay, that makes a lot of sense because it's all based around. The theory, you know, the, the the discovery of and the invention of compound interest. So your money starts working for you. And where I got that, where I got that concept from, 
was it was my grandfather had a dear 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 friend who um never worked a day in his life i can't say he never worked a day in his life but it'd been a lot of years since he'd worked and when i was a, when i was a young kid just growing or just just graduating high school i had a lawn care company and i was mowing yards and stuff and out there you know making a great living I, I had, within a year and a half of starting it which i started in my senior year of high school i had 19 people working for me and i picked up my uh my grandfather's friend and as a client and i was out there doing his yard and we got to talk and one of the nicest gentlemen i'd ever met and he inherited he inherited um seventy five thousand dollars when he was 18 years old his 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 mother and father had passed away it was a, a little bit of a savings that they had saved up and now, now mind you when i was doing this i graduated high school in 84 okay 30 years ago and i was probably doing his yard in 85 86. at that point i believe he was probably around 80 years old okay he was probably around 80 years old at that time so I, I don't know the exact, I can't pinpoint the exact date when he inherited that money. But when he inherited it, he started making it work for him. And he started doing investments that were centered around compound interest. And he actually had bought some mortgages and, and, and was in that space as well. And the beautiful thing about it was he lived in a very nice, modest home. Him and his wife traveled a lot they were seemed to be gone on a regular basis travel with my grandparents uh, all over the world and at the end of the day when he passed away um, him actually him and his wife had moved to uh, to Florida um, after I'd sold the company and stuff and they had moved to Florida and he ended up passing away and she inherited all of the wealth and um, lived out a very very well-to-do life my point here is this he looked at things differently he looked at things very differently and those people that are innovators who are unemployable look at things differently because see one of the things about being an employer or being an employee for me i couldn't be an employee i don't do well in those conditions because i look at things differently i take the time to look at them differently not just on the surface but at a deeper at a deeper level to the point where what I'm going to show you today is something I've been doing for 18 years okay in 18 years I've been doing I've been in the note space but I'm going to show you this this aspect of the note environment that has created some amazing results in this in the direction of building a six-figure business okay for the last 18 years I've always been able to find mortgage deals to wholesale for quick cash. In 2014, I wholesale 53 deals for an average of $4,691 per deal, which equals $248,623, just shy of a quarter million dollars. That puts me in the top 4.7% of Americans. Automatically to the top, top 5% of the class. By doing 53 deals for an average of $4,600 a deal. Now, I'm going to show you that 53 deals is nothing compared to our industry. Absolutely nothing. Nothing. Not, it's not even a drop in the bucket. It's not even, it's not even a puddle of water. It's, it's, it's nothing. It's not even an eyedropper full of water. And I'm going to show, I'm going to show it to you from beginning to end so that you understand, hey, this is how this whole thing works. And if you want to be a part of it and you want to know all the nuances along the way and how to build a six-figure income, I'm going to give you an opportunity at the end to be a part of it, part of it, a very elite group of people that I'm currently working with and that I'm going to invite a few more people into and build up a six-figure business. And here's the thing. It's not going to take away from our business because the industry is so huge and the opportunity is so huge that to keep it all to myself would simply be selfish rather than selfless. Now, I like being selfless 
because I don't want to live. I don't live in a, a place of fear. I don't live in a place of fear. I don't live in a place of, of, of need and, and greed and all that other stuff. And that's that's the other thing that that when you get around the financial world and you start getting a financial mindset, that you understand how once you understand how money works, you don't have that fear-based behavior anymore because you understand how it works. And understanding how it works is what makes it flow. So I'm going to share with you how that how that works from beginning to end today. So you may be asking me if you you may be asking at this point, who is Troy Fuller? If you've never heard me speak or never even heard about me, and you just found this uh, this video online or something, I want to introduce who I am. I'm an 18 year veteran of the real estate industry. By the end of 2014, I'd done over 13,148 real estate mortgage transactions that equal over a billion dollars, one plus billion in transactional history, with a sizable amount of the deals being done through wholesaling notes and mortgages. See, I started wholesaling notes and mortgages when I got started in the business. You want to know why? Because I didn't have any money. I didn't have any money. Although I was intrigued by a different way of thinking, I hadn't been thinking that way for years. I, I worked. I worked as an employee. I was an employee for a for Ben Crenshaw, who was a two-time Masters champion. Yes, the Ben Crenshaw out of Austin, Texas. That's where I lived at the time, and I actually lived in San Antonio, but I worked in Austin. And uh, the simple truth is, he's an amazing, amazing person. Loved working with him. If I had to go back and work for somebody again, that would be the person I would go seek out a job from again. Just an amazing, amazing person. And I can't say enough about the gentleman or his team of people. Just an amazing group of people. But I, but it was still, it was a job. And I wanted to do something different. I had, a, I had a passion to do something different. But my point here was I didn't have any money. I, as most employees, and I know I got paid extremely well working for him, as most employees, I spent every dime I made or darn near close to it living paycheck to paycheck kind of mentality. And I knew that I needed to change that mentality because it wasn't working because I could look back over the, over the prior, you know, 15 years of my life and I could look at my savings account and it didn't equal up. I made a whole bunch of money, but there wasn't nothing in the kitty. And so I had to, I had to change the way I was doing things because it wasn't working. I'd already had a 15-year track record that didn't amount to much. So when I started learning about the notes business, and got my mind around it, started changing the way my mind worked, I started realizing, okay, I don't have any money to get involved in this. How is it that I make it work? Well, I did it through wholesale. I did it through wholesaling. I started with wholesaling. We still do it today. We did you know, almost a quarter of a million dollars worth of it last year alone. But we also, since then, about three years into the business, I, I, had, I developed my own lines of credit in the business. And through developing my own lines of credit, now we have our we purchase things for ourselves. We do that on a regular basis. So I had to transition into that space. But see, nobody was going to give me a line of credit unless I had transactional history. They're like, you have an unproven track record. You do not have a financial mindset to manage millions of dollars worth of notes and mortgages. You have an employee's mindset. So you need to change that. And when you show us that you've gotten the understanding of how the industry works, then we'll give you money. And they did. They gave me money. Matter of fact, they gave me money about the 18th mark, 18th month mark, but I didn't actually use it until about three years into it. Because even I was unsure about how to use it properly. I didn't want to make any errors or mistakes. So you know, my biggest reason on who I am and why I do what I do is my family. Let me introduce my family to you. Gentleman here on the far left um, is Jack. He's my 11 year old. Uh, loves Legos and and uh, and uh, just a great great kid all around. He's uh, just a really smart young man. Um, there's me holding our youngest son Parker. Parker's our uh, he's one of our twins. He uh, their twins are a little bit over two years old in um, at this current time. And then there's my beautiful wife holding. Our other twin, Camden, and uh, just I can't say enough about her. She's my she's my light, my joy. 
she's my everything. She's just an amazing, amazing uh, person in so many ways. And then my older son there is Hunter. He's 14, loves uh, loves riding bikes and, and BMX racing and, and motorcycles and just is fascinated with uh, with that with that area of life. He just he loves doing things with his hands. He just that's just the type of person he is. Just an amazing out of the box kind of thinker in so many ways. In so many ways. So what if I could show you an inside look at a ten plus billion dollar industry, a year untapped industry that has been growing by double digits every year since two thousand six. And it's untapped. When I say untapped, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> I mean it's literally untapped. It's literally untapped. And there are people out there, ladies and gentlemen, that are talking about notes. There are people out there that promote notes and note, note courses and stuff. But the question is, how many notes are they really buying? Because they can talk about it all day long. You know, they, but are they actually doing something? Now, I'm not here to beat up on people, but the, the question, the point I mean is, if you are thinking that a lot of people are talking about it, you're right. There's a lot of people talking about it. Very few people taking action. And so I want to be around action takers. I want to be around people that are going to implement and take action because the difference between, as my mom says, she, she's always reminded me that, of this one thing. Don't confuse action with results. Just because you're busy doesn't mean you're accomplishing anything. What are your results? Because your results will speak louder than words. It's like a person who walks around with a Super Bowl ring on his finger. He, he doesn't have to say anything. He doesn't have to say a word. You know that he's got that result. You know that there was a lot of time and work and energy and money put into accomplishing that result. It's like the same thing with somebody who's driving a really fancy car, or living in a really big house. They don't have to say a word because the result speaks for itself. My point here is this. This is an untapped industry. And we're talking $10 billion. We're talking $10 billion last year that was compounded by the year before, which is 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 compounded by the year before. Because we typically, as an industry, generate around ten plus billion dollars a year in real estate notes and mortgages. And I'm talking seller financed. I'm not talking. I'm not even getting into the institutional paper side today, because that in itself is a nine point nine trillion dollar industry. But it's also an industry that can have somewhat of a barrier to entry, meaning you got to get through the banks. And things of that nature. So when I got started, I, I want to say, okay, I want to do this. I'm going to do this. But let's figure out the, the path of least resistance. Because I was new to the game. I was new to the space. And so I figured out what that was as a whole. And that was dealing with people who were creating seller finance product. You know, there's 10 states that create the most amount of product for our industry. Texas being number one. California being number two. Florida being number three. North Carolina being number four, Arizona being number five, Georgia being number six, Washington being number seven, Ohio being number eight, Oregon being number nine, and Iowa being number ten. Okay, those are the top ten states. Now that doesn't mean the other 40 states don't create notes, but as far as a David Letterman's top ten list, there you go. Those are your top ten states nationwide. And they produce enough product that anybody, if everybody on this call took action, there's no way we could even tackle one state's worth of product development. There's no way we could tackle just the state of Arizona, and I'll show you why here in a minute. Here's seller financing in Texas. There were 24,731 seller financing notes created from January 1st of 14 to December 31st of 14, with the $148,000 being the average first lien position balance, 96 million being the largest note, and 2,481 being the smallest note. Now, where did I get my data from? Well, I call the title company. 
friends of mine over at First American Title gave me the information because they are the largest title or one of the largest title companies in, in the U.S. or well, in the world as well. But my point is they understand and they track all real estate transactions as a whole. So they gave me, I asked for the data, they gave me the data. Here's California. Seller financing in California, there were 22,740 seller financing transactions from January 1st of 14 to December 31st of 14. With the average uh, first lien position being 249,000 and the largest note being 171 million and the smallest note being 2,140. Okay, now this is all notes combined. Okay, I want to get, let me back up and give a little blurb here. This is all notes combined residential, commercial, land, second liens, all that stuff combined. This is what you're, this is what you're seeing here. Okay. Seller financing in Florida. There were 19,090 seller financing note transactions from January 1st of 14 to December 31st of 14. The average first lien position balance was 132,000. The largest note was 87 million. And then the smallest note was $899. Seller financing in Arizona. There were 11,214 seller financing notes from January 1st of 14 to December 31st of 14, with $131,000 being the average first lien position balance, and then $149 million being the largest note, and $52 being the smallest note. I have no idea why somebody wrote a $52 note uh, on this, on anything. I would think it would cost more money to write the note than it would just to be, <laughs> just to pay it off. So uh, I have no idea why that was created, but it was. It was. Plenty of people do funny things. So um, also all that from uh, First American Title, the data from First American Title. My point here, when I said a moment ago, the fact of doing, just in the state of Arizona, there's 11,214 deals. That was just created last year. That doesn't count what was created in 13 or 12 or 11 or 10 or 9 or 8 or 7 or 6 or 5 or 4 or 3 or 2 or 1. That doesn't count any of those notes created over that time period. So my, my overall point here is when you're looking at just a year's worth of pro product production, you don't have to, hold on a minute, I think I'm going to sneeze here. Um, I thought I was going to sneeze there. You don't have to look at it as an isolated moment in time. Phew, excuse me. Um, you don't have to look at it as an isolated moment in time, meaning, okay, well, they created it last year, so now it's over with. No, no, no. That's the beauty of it. They created it last year, and the average length of time that somebody holds on to a note that they create before they sell it is 4.8 months. 4.8 months that they hold on to it. So I'm thinking to myself, Okay, well, you know, that's the average length of time that they hold on to it. That means somebody who hold who created stuff. Phew, excuse me. I'm sorry about that. For some reason I got the sneezes. Um somebody holds on to it for 4.8 months, then that means all of 2014 is fair game. It's fair game. Anybody created a note in 2014. They're open to selling the note, and here's why. They're no longer excited about collecting a little four or $500 a month payment. Why is that? Because it's outside of their normal course of business. They don't create notes because they're a want to. They create notes because it's a have to. Big difference. Big, big difference. So why is that? Well, it's simple. There's been a huge increase in seller financing because investors and home buyers have not been able to get uh, home buyers financed in today's capital markets. Or homeowners have not been able to get home buyers financed in today's capital market. That means property owners have taken matters into their own hands. Simply stated, 
the banks aren't lending. And, they're, and or if they are lending, they're lending to a very, very small sector of the economy. Meaning you better have every I dotted and every T crossed in order for them to give you a dollar. And what happens a lot of times is that people who seek out seller financing properties, they don't want to deal with the banks. They don't want to give up their tax returns. They, they may have suffered a foreclosure two years ago, or they may have suffered a bankruptcy a year ago, or they may have had repossessions, or they may have had a, a, a medical emergency, so the medical collections companies have trashed their credit, or they may have... Uh, they may not have enough money down. Maybe the bank wants 20% and they got 10%. Maybe they haven't been on their job long enough. They want, they want employment for the last two years at a stable job, and they had to switch jobs six, eight months ago. So all of these play into the characteristics of loan origination. And if, and if one thing's out of sync, then the bank has to deny it or turn it down or decline the loan. And that's, that's, that's okay, that's their prerogative, that's their choice, but that doesn't take away that person's desire to own a house or take away their desire for home ownership. So they seek out other means because home ownership is a very viable way of, of increasing or developing, uh, you know, enhancing a person's net worth. It also creates pride, home ownership pride, family pride, family stability, things of that nature. So they'll seek out investors. And investors love them because out of the investors, they'll get full asking price for their house. Because somebody who's not paying an all cash or making an all cash offer, they don't really have the ability to negotiate. You know, you know as well as I do, if, if you or I go out to buy a house today and we've got the backing of a bank or an institution on a pre-approval letter, we're not necessarily going to pay full asking price for that house that we find. If that house is for sale for $200,000, chances are we'll probably make an offer about one seventy-five or one one eighty or something like that, and we'll start there. And we'll probably end up somewhere around the 190 range, maybe less. And we'll, we'll knock off 5%, 10% on the, on the price of that house because we're paying all cash. Okay, does that make sense? Well, when people buy through seller financing, they don't, they don't have that necessarily leveraged aspect to what they're doing, okay? So let's take a, let's take a look at, a, at how to wholesale a note deal to make money. And this is, this is something that you wanted to know, and I'm going to share it with you today because, as I said in the beginning here, this is something I've been doing for 18 years. So this is not some, how you say, shiny object syndrome. This isn't some you know, hyped up new concept and everything else. And here's what, I, here's what I hate about all the hyped up new concepts going on out there. <coughs> Is they're here today, gone tomorrow. Okay? And that in itself is scary because if you're going to invest time and energy into something, you want to make sure it's going to be around for a while. You, know, you want to make sure that, that, that if, you're, if you're really wanting to change the financial direction of where you're at today, Invest time and money in something that has a long track record, not something that was just created 90 days ago or some concept or something that worked one time. That's just, that's just not, that's not good business practice. You look at why Warren Buffett is so successful because he invests in businesses and industries that have long track records and have a long foreseeable future in front of them. Even if there are some bumps along the way, they know and he knows that this has got a long-term future in front of him. Okay, there's no mystery to what Warren Buffett does. There's no mystery to his business model. He shares it freely with anybody who asks. And, it's, and it has everything to do with longevity. How long has this industry been around? And what's the future projection of this industry going forward? Because that's what creates that financial stronghold that he, that he ends up getting in every industry that he gets involved in. And so I'm going to share with you today that same thing, but from a street-level perspective. Because, see, the thing is we all know banks have been around forever. 
banks have been lending forever. As a matter of fact, we probably have our mortgages with banks, if you think about it. But at the end of the day, how do we do what a bank does without bank capital, without the bank backing, without the taxpayer money and the employees and everything else? How do we do that at a street-level investor perspective and create the long-term residual value that we're seeking? And I'm going to show that with you right here on this particular deal. Here's a house in Katy, Texas. Um, real simply, the investor purchased this house for $76,000. He uh, ended up selling it after repairs for $140,000 with seller financing. He invested around $11,000 in, uh, in repairs, uh, majority of it being uh, cosmetic. As you can see, it's a, it's a good-looking house. You know, It's a clean, good-looking house. Needs a little uh, weed killer on the driveway there, it looks like. But uh, on the outside, it's, it's in beautiful shape. On the inside, it just needed some paint and things of that nature. So that's what, that's what he did. With that, um, he, uh, the sales price is $140,000. Down payment was $14,000. And the mortgage amount was actually $126,000. That's a, that's a typo. That's actually the UPB when we, when we purchased it. So I apologize for that typo there. But the uh, mortgage amount was one twenty six. dollars the term was 360 months. Interest rate was 8%. Uh, payment was 924.54. The number of payments made when he brought it to us was 17 payments. Okay, 17 payments. Number of payments left was 343. Okay. Um, mortgage amount here 126. I got I got them on the wrong slide. So mortgage amount here. It was when we purchased it, it was 124, 483.49 um, was the mortgage amount. We purchased that at $104,000, 104,505.08 to be exact, and it was based on a 10% yield. <coughs> Sorry about that, guys. I got a cough going on today. Um, that 10% yield is not necessarily a yield that we go off of all the time. People often say, well, what's your yield? Well, to be honest with you, our yields vary based on the overall quality of the product. Because, see, so many times people want to put it in a little box. Okay? That would be like me walking into the bank and you walking in the bank and going, what's our interest rate? Well, they first tell both of us, hey, we need to, you need to sit down and fill out a credit application. We'll pull your credit and we'll see what you want to buy. Then we'll disclose what your interest rate will be. I guarantee you, if I walk in a bank and you walk in a bank, and we walk into the same bank at the same location, the same branch, and talk to two different people in that bank, both of us are going to walk out of there with different terms and conditions for buying a house with that bank. Why is that? Because we're different people. We have different financial strengths, and we have different financial weaknesses as people. And the bank regulates that. Well, the same thing is true in the note space. In this particular case, they put down 10%. They had uh, they had good credit, meaning the credit and good in our industry is typically around 650. And they had they had some seasoning at 17 months for the seasoning. So buying it at a 10% yield was something that we could make money off of. Remind you, we are here to make money. Okay, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna shy away from it. I'm not gonna back away from it. I'm not going to you know, sugarcoat it. We are in the space to make a living. We're going to make money as a whole. This deal was brought to us by an individual, by one of our students. Their fee on it was, was 3%, which in this case was a little bit on the low side, but the, they took a little bit lower fee because of the seller's expectation and what the seller wanted to get out of the note deal. Okay, and so the, the seller of the note netted $100,005.08. Okay, that's what they got out of the deal. The individual that brought us the deal made $4,500. Now, typical average range of a fee for, for somebody bringing us a deal is anywhere from about 2% to 6%. And it's all predicated on what the deal can afford as a whole. Taking 6% out of a $20,000 note deal, you're not going to close any deals. 
at that level. Okay, taking six percent out of a out of a hundred fifty thousand dollar note deal, you can do. Okay, but it varies, and every transaction is going to be different. You know, just like if you talk to any realtor out there, ideally they want to get six percent for listing and selling your house, but they're negotiable. Why are they negotiable? Because it depends on how much money you owe on that house, how much money um, the house is worth, and whether or not their fee is actually going to kill that deal. You know, my daughter just sold her house last or two weeks ago, and she had literally no equity in her house. Now, she held on to it. She kept making her payments. The economy came up a little bit. She's in Tampa, Florida, so it kind of bounced back a little bit. Now she's at a point where she can literally sell the house and walk away, but she doesn't make any money. I think she had to bring like $900 or $1,000 to the closing table. But she was okay with that. She's like, Dad, I just want to be done with this thing. I'm like, okay, great. So be done with it. But her but her realtor had to end up taking a 4% fee to get it done. And and the realtor being the amazing person that he was, and, and they had a, a friends and, you know, they – circle of friends and all that other kind of stuff that played into it. Bottom line was they got the deal done. But my daughter didn't make any money. He didn't make a lot of money because this thing had been on the market since June of last year. So it was quite a, quite, a, quite a long time on the market. But a lot of hard work went into it, and now it's done, done. That sometimes happens. That sometimes is true in the note business as well. And I'll show, show you what I mean by that here in just a minute. I know that was a long expletive. For a short answer, but the bottom line is they took a fee of three percent, four point four four thousand five hundred dollars. So the net to the mortgage holder was hundred thousand five dollars and eight cents. So breaking this whole thing down, okay, what does this look like? Well, the mortgage sales price was a hundred thousand dollars. I'm sorry, it was hundred thousand. Yes, down payment was fourteen thousand. So they got fourteen thousand. They received seventeen payments of fifteen thousand seven. 17 for a gross total amount of 129,722.26. So it's 93% of their overall sales price is what they've achieved there. 93%. Remember what I said a little bit ago? They sold this on seller financing. So they were able to sell it for full asking price. Had a cash buyer walked in there without a realtor. The cash buyer could have easily have negotiated down the the sales price of that house at least by five percent, maybe as much as ten percent. Okay, depending upon how flexible the seller was or is. Had he even had he had he involved a realtor, that would have immediately been approximately six percent off the top, plus a cash reduction in the sales price, which would have put him way below 93% because even in those circumstances, he would have had to pick up some closing costs as well. So in this set of circumstances, he achieved a 93% return or 93% of asking price. In traditional financing, he would have probably been closer to 90% asking price. Okay. So minus, <clears throat> minus the repairs of 11200 minus the house cost of 76000 it breaks down to net profit for the seller was $42,522.26. The IRR for the seller was 48.7%. And the fee for the individual that brought the deal to us was $4,500. Okay. So when people say, well, doing notes, you don't make any money in doing notes. You One, you do make money doing notes. And you can do it nationwide. So you're not demographically isolated or locked into a demographics that you that you can't get out of. Because when you look at brick and rehab investors, brick and rehab investors, you know, they're kind of locked into the area in which they can work, unless they have crews all over the country. But at the end of the day, you know, I'm not locked into anywhere in one particular place in the country. This exam this deal here is, is an example. I'm here in Phoenix, Arizona. The seller was in Katy, Texas. The broker that brought the deal was out of Florida. So pretty nice opportunity for them. And this is just one 
one transaction. So let me show you what a let me show you what a live note trade looks like as well. And I want to bring up this. Um, let me switch screens here. So I want to break down a live note trade and show you how to work a note to create value and profit for you and the note seller. Okay, and this is important to understand because one of the things that um, one of the things that uh, is easily used to, for lack of better words, combat a note seller's objectives. Because let's just talk about it. You know, note sellers have objectives. Okay. They want to know what your yield is. They want to know what the discount is. They want to know this. They want to know that. Well, these are, the, mind you, these are the same people that wanted to buy the house at, you know, 20 cents on the dollar from the bank. So on one hand, they want to buy everything at wholesale. On the other hand, they want to sell everything at retail, and they want to net out the middle. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Walmart does it every day. So there's no fault in what they do. There's no error in what they do. But at the end of the day, how does that work in conjunction to creating cash flow? Because their why is what motivates them to sell. Okay? And a why is what motivates everybody. Okay? A why is what motivates everybody. You're motivated by a why. I'm motivated by a why. It may be your family. It might be your health. It may be uh, financial development. It might be, uh, you know, it, it could be whatever. But there's a motivation of a why. You know, people go to college for four years to become a teacher. Why? Because they want to be a teacher. They're passionate about being a teacher. And that's an amazing accomplishment for those people that, that do that and, and fall and, and go into that field of, of um, employment. That's, a, that's an amazing gift that those people have. I could never be a teacher. I could never be a teacher. I, I just, I couldn't, yeah, I just, it wouldn't work for me. It wouldn't work for me. So I have a lot of respect for people that do that. A lot of respect. So they're motivated by that why. So in working with a seller, I always want to find out what their why is. Why do you want to sell this? And in this particular case, the why was pretty, I say, Standard, one I'd heard quite a few times, and I'm gonna I'm gonna break down the nuances because right now what you see is just a bunch of numbers, and the numbers can be very sexy. But let's find out in the end. I'll share with you why he wanted to sell this note, and let's start out out here at the top. We got a hundred fifty-two thousand dollar note, nine percent interest rate, three hundred sixty month term, no balloon. Payment was twelve uh, twelve hundred dollars. Payments made were seven at the time. We also have the ability to do partials down here, but that doesn't that doesn't uh, work in this particular scenario. The balance uh, on the note when we bought it was one fifty one. Once again, nine percent interest rate. Three hundred fifty three payments were left. Seven payments were made. Once again, payment amount was twelve twenty three. We bought this at 11.5% interest rate. We offered up $123,217.31. The seller was seeking 85% of UPB. Okay? He wanted $128,000 for a $151,000 note. Not unheard of, not unreasonable, very workable situation. In that... So he wanted 128. I priced it directly to the individual that brought it to us for 123,217. They took a modest fee of $3,500. Now, why did they take a fee of $3,500? Because they, they already knew what the seller's target was. Seller's target was 128. He's like, okay, if I have any chance of getting this deal, I need to work the numbers so that the seller will accept. Well, how did the seller accept? Well. Once he took took out his thirty five hundred dollar fee, which they're you know they've earned, the net to the seller was one nineteen <clears throat> seven seventeen. Now psychologically speaking, I personally probably would have only taken three thousand dollars. 
because the difference between 119 and 120, psychologically speaking, is a big trigger point. Is a big trigger point. So then a little bit less money, but 100 100% of nothing, still nothing. Okay, that old eulogy. 100% of nothing, still nothing. People have asked me, well, Troy, would you do a deal for 500 bucks? Yes, I have. I've done deals for $500. I've done deals for, for you know, tens of thousands of dollars too. But the, my point here in saying is, in sharing that is, that would have been one little change I would have done. But see, he, he could always go back. Okay, he could always go back. You can always give money back into the pot, but you can't necessarily take money out of the pot once the offer has been presented. Okay, like he presented 3500 If he wanted to make 4000 decided he wanted to make $4,000, it's hard to go back and take money back out of the pot from a seller because okay, you've already given them the offer. That makes sense? So breaking this down, how did we get this deal closed? How did we increase? How is it that we consistently, day in and day out, contract over 90% of the deals that we see? Well, it's simple. I had to get some water there. Sorry about that. I had to pause. Um, we broke it down in what it's in what had really happened here. And what had really happened here was they had received eight or seven payments for eighty five hundred dollars. The down payment he had received was twenty seven thousand dollars. Okay. Now he's already spent the eighty five hundred dollars because that came in every month and he spent it every month. Okay? It's the American way. He'd already spent the twenty seven thousand dollars and put that towards another property that he was doing. So that money was gone. So here he is. He's got this note on this property that he's collecting $1,200 a month on, which as a total between the 119 the 85 and the 27 was $155,000, which equals 87% of the sales price, and it equals 102% of the unpaid principal balance. Because in, in, in truth, and you can't argue with numbers, he had a $152,000 note that the balance on it was one fifty one four, So it only dropped by $600. But he collected fifty. I'm sorry, $8,500. So he made about $8,000 profit just on the payments on paper. Now here's his why. He owes a hundred thousand dollars on the property to a hard money lender, which is a thousand dollar a month payment. There's no money in the deal for him anymore. He's completely he has sucked every dime out of the deal at this point. And now he has a problem. And the problem is this: He collects twelve hundred a month. He pays a thousand a month. He now has to manage that process every month. He's only making about two hundred dollars a month. Every month, it's what's known in the industry as a wrap mortgage. Wrap mortgages happen about ninety-five percent of the time. I would say that at least ninety-five percent of the deals that we do in our office are wrap mortgages, meaning that they bought the house, they owe some money on it, they may have bought it 10 years ago and decided to do seller financing, they may have bought it 10 months ago and did seller finance. But n nonetheless, they owe somebody some money. And they sold it at a higher price point, but that higher price point, and, and it's covering the payments, but now they're just now they're just shuffling dollars. From the right hand to the left hand, from the right hand to the left hand, from the right hand to the left hand. They're just shuffling dollars. And where they and they the only time that they realize the true profit from the deal is when they quit shuffling the dollars. Okay? That's the only time that they realize the true profit from the deal. So his why was I want to pay off this hundred thousand dollar loan. In a couple of, for a couple of reasons. One is I'm tired of only making two hundred dollars a month, so it's not really as exciting um, as I'd like it to be. And then number two, 
the uh, in order for me to borrow more money from this particular lender, I got to pay this loan off first because it's beginning to mature. Because hard money loans and stuff like that, they don't last forever. I mean, I guess they could, but it's rare that they do, and it's it's really rare that somebody would want it to. But nonetheless, they had they had to pay it off in order to get more money to go buy more houses. So their model is what their model is. It's it's a it's a find, fix, and flip model. And although this form of financing helped them sell that house and liquidate it and move it into another category of management, it's still it's still management. So their why was pretty powerful, in the sense that I want to pay off this underlying lien. So in doing so. He also gets another twenty thousand dollars, approximately well, approximately twenty thousand. Really boils down to about nineteen thousand dollars that he gets in a lump sum change. So then the question becomes: Do you want to keep collecting two hundred twenty-three dollars a month, or do you want a lump sum change of nineteen thousand dollars? Because if you're pacing. At two hundred twenty-three dollars a month, it's going to take you approximately another ninety plus months to make nineteen thousand dollars, or you can have that today. So the question is, do you want two twenty-three or do you want nineteen thousand cash? That becomes the question. So why do I share this with you? Why do we look at it from a different perspective? Remember what I talked about at the beginning of the call? Looking at it differently. Looking at it completely differently. Stepping out of the box, this is out of the box thinking. Looking at it from a completely different perspective, one, it will disclose the why, and two, you don't have to sell anything. You don't have to convince them in any way. Just allowing the numbers to speak for themselves explains everything. Because the one thing I love about this business, if there's anything – probably the highest or the number one thing I love about this business is that the integrity is in the numbers in the industry and in the business. The integrity is in the numbers because the numbers speak truth. The numbers are non-emotional. So in other words, it takes that human element out of it. A lot of times when people say, well, what's your yield? What kind of discount do you buy at? Well, I bought notes from 1.5% all the way up to 95%. So... You're going to be somewhere in the middle. Well, that doesn't answer my question. Okay, well, you want to know what our discounts are typically have been over the years. That's what it is. What kind of yield do you buy at? Well, we bought it yields as low as 4%. We bought it yields as high as 25%. Well, that doesn't answer my question either. Well, I'm sure it doesn't, but that's, that's the reality of 18 years in the business. But that's also the reality of the business, whether it's, you've been in it for – 18 years or 18 minutes. That's the business. But that's what people get caught up in because they're naive. They're ignorant to because they because they read in some Cliff Notes book, you know, well, note buyers buy at a particular yield spread based on its particular, you know, formula, blah, 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 algorithm, blah, 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 blah. No, we don't. No, we don't. Yield is irrelevant. Cash flow, capital preservation, that's what's relevant. Can I purchase a note that will produce a cash flow and preserve my capital in a safe environment? The same way the banks think. Because mind you, this note and this borrower, these are non-institutional quality buyers. These are non-institutional quality buyers today. Now, they may change up whatever, or fix whatever, or modify or correct whatever it is that kept them from getting institutional financing. I guess people can do that. But at the end of the day, these are non-institutional buyers. So we're taking on a risk that a federally insured bank will not. So we don't look at it as a yield spread because here's the thing about yields. When they quit paying, your yield goes to zero. Your yield goes to zero. Now, some of you may be saying, well, Troy, man, this sounds like a lot of risk and all this other stuff. No, it's not a lot of risk 
if you understand how to play in this in the space. In other words, change your thinking. Some people look at football and go, man, that's a risky sport. You can get hurt playing football. You can get hurt playing football if you do things incorrectly. You can also get hurt running track. You can also get hurt driving a car. You can also get hurt riding a bike. So everything can harm you in one way or another if you're doing it incorrectly. How do you get hurt riding, riding a bike? You run a red light. You're almost guaranteed to get hurt. Things of that nature. You don't take time to understand the, the, the working aspects of the bike. My point here is this. I share these things because it's a raw situation. I want to be open and honest and transparent with you. But the reason I got off on the tangent about the yields and stuff is because that's where sellers will want to lead you to. They try and do it to me all the time. It's irrelevant what my yield spread is. I want to look at the overall quality of this note. Just like when they bought that house, they wanted to look at the overall quality of that house, didn't they? They wanted to walk through it. They wanted to inspect it. They wanted to get it comped out. They wanted to see the list of repairs that were needed. They wanted to see all of those things before they ever wrote a check. And what's ironic about it is that nobody asked them how much money they were going to make. When they bought that house, nobody ever asked them. The realtor didn't ask them. The homeowner didn't ask them. Nobody asked them how much money they were going to make or how much profit they were going to make off the deal. The bank didn't ask them. They just agreed on a price, and it was up to the seller, I'm sorry, it was up to the buyer to create that value and to create that profit for themselves. Whatever that looked like to them, it looked like to them. So the same is true with us in the note business. Okay? Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense to, to some degree. But going back to why I present deals this way, because it, it negates yield and everything else. Because I've already now I now I have one figured out their why and their motivation. And two, I've told them what they already know. Hey, you already got eighty five hundred dollars in payments and you already got twenty seven thousand dollars cash down. And by the way, I'm gonna give you another nineteen thousand dollars or you can keep making two hundred dollars a month. So the choice is yours. You want $200 a month, which doesn't even pay for a car payment, doesn't even pay for an electricity bill or, or gas and water or heat in some states, or you want $19,000 cash that you can actually go and put into another house, another property, and start making more money again. And they always say, I want the lump sum of cash. Yeah, I know. I know what you want because I know what you're motivated by. You're motivated by turning your dollars. You're motivated by turning your dollars, which there's nothing wrong with that. that that's their model. That should be their model. They should be thinking about that all the time. That should, Because that's what's going to drive their success. That's what's going to create their financial freedom as a whole. So you gotta, you got to learn to speak their language and not get caught up on the other side of the fence saying, well, what's your yield spread? My yield spread's irrelevant. So is what's in my bank account. It's none of your business. Just like what's in your bank account is none of my business. It's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. But at the end of the day, a yield is just a mathematical formulation. What creates the yield is the quality of borrower behind it and the asset that you have for collateral. That's what creates the capital preservation aspect of the, of the trade and of the formula. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, so let's jump back here on track. And let me bring up the PowerPoint here real quick. Give me one moment. So there's three parts to this business model, okay? 
And number one, this business takes three things to be successful. One, a willing seller. How do you find willing sellers? Marketing. Okay? It's a business. It's not a nice idea. It's not a hobby. It's not a concept. It's a business. Just like banks do marketing, we do marketing. Okay, 20%, 26% of all real estate deals are done with seller financing. So you have a large pool to tap into. Number two, you gotta have <clears throat> you gotta have a willing buyer for any note that you find. Like us, Pinnacle Investments. Okay, you've got to have cash behind you. That buyer, like us, we're the ones who come forward with the proof of funds letter and the contracts and all the money to close the deal. You don't have to have any of those things. Like I said, when I got started in the business 18 years ago, I didn't have any money. I was living paycheck to paycheck. I was an employee of a great company, of a great company with great leadership and everything else. It was, it was the best job I'd ever had in my entire life. And I didn't have a lot of jobs, but, you know, this was the best. But my point here is this. I didn't have any money, so I had to figure out a way to, to get started in an industry that was a worldwide, nationwide industry. Because notes and mortgages are traded worldwide. They're a currency factor. And that's a whole other level of conversation that I'm not going to use, that I'm not going to bring into today's call. But maybe we'll talk about that at another date. But it's, it's a currency factor. It's a worldwide currency factor. But how do I do it on a street level without any money, without any skill set? How is it that I figure this thing out? Because I was intrigued by it. I was really intrigued by it. I mean, you know, there was a why behind it. What was my why? I wanted to create that residual income. I wanted to create that residual value. So I aligned with a company out of Irving, Texas, called the Associates Financial Services. Okay? They were backed by the Ford Motor Corporation. These guys were doing $250 million a year in note purchases. Trust me, they had no shortage of cash ever. And so I aligned myself with them, and they said, I said, what do you want? They told me what they wanted, and I went and got it. They were really simple. Troy, we want first lien, performing, residential notes, nationwide basis. Okay, sounds great. And that's what I went and got. And I would bring those back to them on a regular basis, and they'd pay me like, like clockwork. It was amazing. It, you know, when I was when they were around, I was I was closing anywhere between fifteen to twenty deals a month with them, every single month. You know, unfortunately, they were bought out by Citicorp, and Citicorp decided they didn't want to get in, be involved in the private mortgage sector, and so they shut that that side of the business down with several other parts of it as well. That's why they left the industry. Okay, but the people as part of that company are still around, which is kind of amazing. So you got to have a willing buyer. Number three, you got to have effort. You got to put some time into this. You got to put some energy into it. If you're not willing to put the time and the energy into it, you're not going to produce the result. It's that simple. No, no sugar coating, no shiny object syndrome, no nice idea, no, no fluffy concepts. Work. Good, hard American work. Straight up. Is it, does it have to be really difficult? No, it doesn't have to be really difficult at all. As a matter of fact, let me show you, let me show you what that is. Let's do step one. Let's go find some deals. Let's find some deals. Let's locate a deal to wholesale live. And let's go to one of the most popular sites that everybody has access to, and it's Craigslist.com or Craigslist.org. I think they've got both. But, um, this is one of 12 ways to find all the deals that you could ever wholesale. Okay? Now, people say, oh, Craigslist, come on, Troy. That's ridiculous. That's not very professional. That's not this. That's not that. You want to know what? We find a half a dozen deals to a dozen deals a month on Craigslist, month in and month out. And we only work it about maybe two hours a week. Two hours a week. Okay? So don't don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Okay? The other reason I love Craigslist is because, one, it's evergreen, and, two, it's free. So if you're sitting here listening to this and you're like, Troy, man, I don't have any money, man. I'm paycheck to paycheck kind of a person, and I don't have money for marketing. I don't have money for this. Okay. So I understand. I get it. I was there, too. When I quit working for, for, for Ben Crenshaw, 
I had enough money to last, I think, about six weeks to pay my rent twice, to pay my car payment twice, and some utilities, and that was it. Uh, that's about how much money I had. And, I, and there was nothing, there was no mystery to it. I mean, this is what I have, this is what I owe. Simple math, once again. So how do you, how do you make that work? Well, back then, we didn't have Craigslist 18 years ago. Mind you, this is something new to the space. Um, we had other ways of doing it as a whole, which actually still worked, believe it or not, which actually worked, still worked. So let me bring up Craigslist here. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So in the Craigslist environment, I'm just going to pull up Phoenix. Okay, remember we talked about Arizona is number four. Um, actually, not number four on the on the map. He's number five, but there's number four on my PowerPoint. Um, but it's my home state, so I thought I'd throw it in there. You come here to real estate for sale. And it's just going to pull up all of the real estate in the, in the Phoenix Metroplex. This takes, I'm, going to, I'm just going to shift to list. There we go. It works faster off list. When you do the gallery, because it's pulling up all the pictures at the same time, it, it, uh, it takes longer. So currently in the in the Arizona market space, we've got twenty eight thousand three hundred and forty five ads. Now, there's probably a lot of duplicates in there and things like that. So I don't know that that's that, that that's necessarily a pinpoint number, but right here on the first page, you've got one right here out of Moon Valley or Moon Mountain, a four bedroom, two bath, seller financing available. Right there, you go down just a little bit further. You got seller financing available. Right there. But if you come up here and you do seller financing and you do search, you come up with 492 opportunities just in the Phoenix market space. 492 opportunities. Now, the beautiful thing about that is <clears throat> there's no way I could call 492 people in a month. I just don't have the time to do it. Now, if you got eight hours a day, five days a week, you could probably get that done. But the reality of it is you can call and talk to, if you if you dedicated two hours of time, you could probably call and talk to six people, maybe, maybe ten people, six to ten people, depending upon how long the conversation is. I tend to have very lengthy conversations with people. They tend to be overly, how do you say, overly um, um, informative about how to do something. So my my calls, I would probably get six to ten. You might get ten to twenty in a two-hour time period. So breaking that down on a five-day week, you I mean, and you know, you're, it's going to take it would take an entire month to call 492 people. Now. You may be sitting there saying, well, Troy, you know, these people haven't even sold their houses. There's no note to buy. You know, you're absolutely right. For the critics out there, let's tackle that. Let's tackle that here and now. Because the truth of it is, you're right. This house here at C Phoenix, three-bedroom pool, seller financing available right here, there's no note on that house. So they have nothing for us to buy. But here's what they do have. What they're telling us in this ad is number one, they're going to be creating a note. Okay, in our business, there's two there's two ways we look at things. There's today money, and then there's tomorrow money. And the truth is, that's every business. That's every business. Okay, Walmart right now, their open their doors are open every single day because they've got what's called today money. People coming in and out of the Walmart all the time, buying this, buying that. But their marketing department is working on tomorrow's money. Is working on tomorrow's money. The next sale, the next big promotion, the next big hot item, the next big this, the next big that. That's tomorrow money. And tomorrow money might be 60 days or 90 days or 120 days down the road, but it's still tomorrow money. Every business functions that way. Ours is no different. So there's today money and there's tomorrow money. In this one ad, there's both. Why is that? If they're on 
if they're on Craigslist or they're listing things in the newspaper or any other site out there, a house for sale with seller financing, there's a 99% chance that they've already done this several times before. So if they've already done it several times before, meaning AKA over the last year, and the average length of time that, that a seller will hold a note before they sell it is uh, 4.8 uh, months, then that tells me they've already created something last year that they might be willing to sell this year. Remember, 2014 figures coming into 2015? Okay, so now all of a sudden they're, hmm, they're interested in selling those other notes. So what do I talk with them about? I start talking with them about this one particular house. Here, we'll just pull it up here and see what it looks like. I start talking to them about this one particular house. But my conversation turns to, have you ever done seller financing before? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I did three of them last year. Really? Pretty cool. What are you doing with those notes? Oh, we collect the payments on them. Oh, that's pretty cool. Interested in possibly selling them? Well, maybe for the right price. Oh, okay. Well, what's the right price? Well, you know, i got to get my money out of them. Okay. Great. Here's the one thing I know in that conversation. They're paying somebody. Because <clears throat> I know that 95% of the deals that come across our desk are what they call wrap mortgages. So there's an underlying lien of some amount underneath every single deal that we do. So technically, when they bring us a note, they're actually selling us a second lien note that when we buy it and the money that, that comes from the purchase of that note actually will shift into paying off any underlying liens, which will move our lien position up to a first lien position. Okay, but We'll get into more of that kind of stuff and the, the opportunity that I have for you guys here in just a moment. But getting back to this, here's a house, great little house. It's not war zone property, beautiful grass, beautiful lawn, did a great job all together. Nice, nice deal. Pretty simple, 1,800 square foot house, with some great backyard, a lot of concrete. Looks like some hardwood floors, looks like some new cabinetry, some new appliances. Um, pretty straightforward type deal. Got a pool in the backyard. That's always a big seller in Arizona. So with that, I know that these guys are creating notes, and I know that those notes are tying up cash flow, and I know that that, that, that lack of cash flow or tying up cash flow is hampering their business. I already know that before I talk to them. And now you know it. Now you know it. So knowing these kinds of things is no different than them knowing when they go to buy a house that, hey, this house is part of an estate. The, the son who owns the estate or was the only child in the estate lives in New York. The house is here in Arizona. He doesn't want the house. He just wants to sell the house to clear out the estate. Sound familiar? Absolutely. Happens all the time. That's what, these, that's what, that's what the investors look for, deals like that. All the time. Because they know they can get a good deal on it. They know that that seller is motivated. Okay, why is that seller motivated? Because they don't want anything to do with the house. Seller lives in, you know, the, the son, the, the heir to the estate. You know, he lives in New York. He doesn't want to come back out to Arizona. He wants to get rid of that house, take the money, and go do something else. That's their why. The note holder's why is I got money tied up. On lines of credit with private investors, hard money lenders, family members, you name it. I got money tied up. I want to liquidate that money. I want to, I want to get that money back into the game plan. I sold this house with seller financing because it brought in a larger buyer base. Okay, brought in a larger buyer base, and that larger buyer base is what created the opportunity for us. Is to liquidate that house and put it on some kind of a cash flow regimen. I can get a down payment. I can get some... Uh, Payments out of the deal. I could debt service my hard money loan, which previously I was taking money out of my own pocket. Now I don't have to take money out of my own pocket, but now that I've had it for four or five months, I'm only making a couple hundred dollars a month off the deal. That's not enough to excite me. Okay. 
that's not enough to excite me. So I want to sell it, get my money back, and go buy another house. And that's what they do. That's what they do all the time. So that's their why. I just shared with you what the golden nugget is to their why, what their motivation is. You want to know why I close over, you know, contract and close over 90% of the deals that come across my desk? That's why. I know what motivates them. Now you do too. So this is a this is the Phoenix market space. Let me let me jump back over here to the PowerPoint. Bring this back up. We're running out of time here. Want to wrap up this call here pretty quickly for everybody's minute, so we can. Uh... All right. So step one: finding deals. Step two: identifying a buyer. Having a list of buyers is key. I'll personally introduce you to a list of fourteen nationwide seasoned note buyers that will compete for your business along with myself. Okay, we want to do business with every one of our students as a whole, and, we'll, and I'll show you an incentive to doing that here in the end. But uh, our matrix in general is we're looking for performing resident, single-family residential nationwide on a nationwide basis, one to four units, credit of 580 plus, ideally 10% down, 360-month term, and an interest rate of 6% plus. Now, when people ask me, that's my elevator speech. Right there is my elevator speech. And people ask me that all the time, so that's my elevator speech. That's also my bullseye on the target. We can all envision a, a target. Well, that's my bullseye in that target. So having that, that bullseye there, that's ideally what we're looking for. Does that mean if you have a deal and it's got a, a, a 500 credit score that we won't look at it, or if it's got a 5% down that we won't look at it, or if it's got a 240-month term that we won't look at it? No, we'll look at everything. Because everything can be purchased at the right price that makes financial sense and involves financial intelligence. We're not here just throwing mud at the wall, thinking that you know, looking for what's going to stick. We actually, there's, we're looking at things from a capital preservation aspect that makes good financial investing sense. And then step three is due diligence. Okay. Your role at this point in the deal is about 5% effort. The majority of due diligence will be done by the end buyer. Okay, So when you bring us a deal, we'll contract out the deal for you on your behalf. We then take over all the responsibility, the work, and the time and the energy to handle all the due diligence. You'll still be involved in it. We'll still keep you in the loophole. We'll still CC you on emails and things of that nature so you're well aware of what's happening. But at the end of the day, we're going to take on that financial responsibility of doing those things because we're the ones writing the check. Okay? So you can go focus on finding another deal. People often say, well, how do you turn, you know, 10, 15, 20 deals a month with, you know, how are you able to do that with the associates? Well, it's simple. I'd find the deals. We'd contract the deals. They would do the due diligence on the deal. So my role was pretty simple. I'd just go find more deals. They handle all the paperwork. I I handle sourcing more deals. That's how I built a business without having any money. I didn't have money for marketing. I didn't have money to buy deals, but I certainly had the time and I certainly had the will and the desire. So I was willing to do those things. So I just took the will and the time and the desire and went out and did what I needed to do. But I backed myself up with a financial institution that would handle all the intricacies of it the title work the valuation the appraisals you know the collecting of paperwork yeah they would send me a list hey Troy we need this from your client I'd, I'd, I'd take the list I'd cut and paste it send it over to my client say hey I need these four or five items and I would go back to finding more deals I wouldn't wait for them to send it over because it might take a day or two I didn't want to waste a day or two um, from finding more deals so this is the beauty of it okay this is how simple it is so Here's some, here's some students from Making Money with Mortgages and, um, and the kind of successes that we've already had with this. I just received $14,120. Uh, I want to thank you, Troy. I just received my wire from, from you for $14,120. And I'd like to thank you and your staff at Pinnacle Investments. This was only my second deal, and you made it very easy and understandable. Thank you for your professionalism and knowledge. I look forward to working with you. On more deals in the future. Uh, Dean Mix from Washington. Uh, Troy, I want to say thanks for helping me make a quick $4,000. Uh, 
the company I was working with before really left me hanging at the last minute. You came through and got my deal closed in record time. You came in, did what you said you were going to do, and actually made it happen. It was great working with you and your team. I look forward to completing more deals with you in the coming weeks. John Collins from Indiana. <clears throat> I just wanted to thank you for handling my deals. I know I can count on you and your team. It's been a pleasure working with professionals. Thanks once again for the $11,000 check. It was the easiest $11,000 I've ever made. David Gluckman from Tampa, Florida. Okay? These are some testimonies from people that we've worked with and their students and the successes that we've had with them already. And this isn't even all the testimonies. I could probably put up at least you know, 75 to 100 testimonies of successful transactions that we've had with students. But the reality of it is we'd be here for another hour and a half just reading testimonies. If you want to do that, you can go to that website and you can see more of that kind of stuff. But my point here is this. It works. It's an 18-year model based on people not having any money, who want to get into a space that's completely different than what you may have learned in the past. It's an out-of-the-box thinking environment as a whole. So you're thinking from a from analytically speaking, you're thinking way outside the box. And it doesn't involve salesmanship because the numbers speak for themselves. Do you want two hundred dollars a month, sir, or do you want nineteen thousand dollars cash? You tell me. And you let them answer the question. Okay, it becomes that simple. It really breaks down to that simple, that, that simplicity. Okay. So here's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a handful of elite motivated real estate professionals to closely work with that are interested in building a six-figure income this year. How this will benefit everyone? Well, let me just be real transparent. Okay. Here's how the relationship will work. You bring in the deal. I bring the money. This combination equals a payday for both of us. Win-win for everyone. You keep 100% of your fee. Okay? You keep 100% of your fee. Unlike other educators in the market space, we back up our students. In other words, we don't sell or promote anything that we're not intimately involved in because that's what helps the student create the success that they're looking for. Okay? I could very easily say, hey, you know, here's all the material. Congratulations. You know, God bless you. Go for it. But that's not going to support you in creating a success. Being a financial backer on your success will help you create a higher level of success. Okay, because the truth is we've got more money than we do time to go find deals. We have more money than anything else. And I don't want a bunch of employees. I don't want 30 employees or anything like that. So the whole premise behind making money with Mortgages Elite is giving you our business model. Here's our business model. Now all you have to do is apply effort and you'll receive the blessing. Okay, apply the effort, receive the blessing. And you may be sitting there saying, Troy, why would you give us your, your, your business model? There's got to be some kind of catch. There is. I want to make money with you. I want to close deals with you. That's the catch. If, you wanna, if you're out finding deals and I'm out closing deals, you're making money, we're making money. No mystery to that. And the fact that, you know, earlier in the, in the presentation, you know, I showed you we're looking at 53 deals that we did last year for a total of $248,000. There's your six-figure business model. I just showed you how to lock in 90% of the deals you come in contact with. It doesn't involve salesmanship at all. It's simply let the numbers speak for themselves. But there's no mystery behind more, making money with mortgages elite. We're going to train up a handful of people because I don't, and this is the catch, if there is a catch, I don't have time to train up, you know, 100 people or 200 people or anything like that. Remember, we're not even going to even attempt that. We're going to train up a handful of people who are truly interested in the same outcome that we're interested in, okay, which is success. Okay, that's what we're looking for. But the truth is we're both going to benefit. We're both going to benefit. But what this also provides you is transactional history. So you start here, but you end up over here. In other words, start doing deals, creating transactional history, and allow that to grow into your own lines of credit to go out and buy notes for yourself. Because there's over 11,000 opportunities just in Arizona alone. I only picked up 53 out of 11,000. 
I don't even think that's 1%, to be frankly honest with you, as a whole. So I didn't even tap into it. If, and I didn't do all 53 notes in Arizona, by the way. That was I'm just using that as an example. So how can you get involved? Well, this is an elite on-demand training that gives you instant access to getting started in building a six-figure business in less than a six less than a 60-day time frame. So how can you get involved? Well, it's very simple. This is a 15-part training that centers around multiple pre-recorded webinars that are set up as on-demand training. Along with each webinar, I've included all the supporting material for each training. That way you are on a fast track to accomplishing your goals. Okay, so when we teach an aspect of the training, all the material is there. Okay, training materials, training materials, training materials. Step-by-step -step process in building a business. Not an idea, not a concept, not a flash in the pan, not shiny object syndrome, a business. Okay, build a business. And you'll create that long-term residual value you're looking for, that long-term freedom that you're looking for. Chasing around shiny object syndrome doesn't create freedom. It doesn't create anything. It creates chaos, I guess, if anything. As my mom likes to say, don't confuse your action with results. And it's, it's, it's true. Don't confuse action with results. It's dangerous to do those kinds of things. So here's what you get. Here's what you will learn and receive by signing up today. Module one, how to find unlimited deals for free. There are 12 different aspects that are taught in this module, not just one. I showed you one. I showed you one. But there's if you think that's good, wait till you learn the other 11. Okay, if you think that's good, wait till you learn, learn the other 11. Module two, how to brand your company for success, uh, branding secrets of the banking industry. Okay, you've got to put together your company like it's a real company, not a hobby, not a nice idea, not a concept, not like, oh, this will do till Friday till I find something else. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for an elite group of people that are really tired of bouncing from idea to idea and not making any money. That's, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for that hungry, that hungry niche that's really, really hungry and is so tired of buying into this program and that program and this idea and that idea and, and never seeing any results because what do they do? Here, here's your training. Thank you very much for your money. And there's no support. There's no back end. There's no ability to talk to anybody to get your questions answered or any of that other stuff. Okay, I'm taking it leaps, leaps and bounds above everybody else because it benefits me to do so. It benefits you to do so as well. Module three, how to, how to do reverse ad marketing, how to read between the lines and find deals that are easy picking for quick paydays. Okay? That's critical. Okay? Because it's out of the box thinking. It's looking at it from a different perspective. Okay? When you do that, you become that top 4.7% in America, not the other 95%. Module four, how to use our new 2015 software to create unlimited lead generation on autopilot. By the way, I'm giving you free access to this software as part of your investment in the training. This software, I didn't even have time to demo it for you today because it's just it's too. I just don't have time. I mean, it boils down to time uh, as a whole. But this software is generating anywhere between 80 to 100 leads for students per day right now, and that's just just with a couple of of of, of, of what I call lead generation setups, or what we call recipes in the business, okay? With a couple of recipes, that's what it's generating for, for current students. Can you imagine getting 80 leads a day? I can't even call 80 leads a day. There's just not enough hours in a day. By the time I, I wake up and I, and I spend time with my wife and my family and school and and phone calls and current business and relationships. And I mean, I just, there's not enough time. But I'd rather have too many leads than not enough leads. Does that make sense? Because I'll call the leads and I'll get to them uh, and we'll, we'll open up the door of opportunity there. Module five, how to work with virtual assistants to have your business running 24 7. While I sleep, our business works. It runs. Module 106 or six, 
how to do bulk mailing that will create deal flow without breaking the bank. There's a trick to doing bulk mailing in our business that creates results, huge results, above, above industry standard results. <clears throat> Module 7, how to market to realtors, turning trash into treasure. I've created a personalized PowerPoint for each student as part of this training for you to use when you're working with realtors. Okay. Module 8, how to market and work with real estate investors, note sellers to create long-term deal flow. I've also created a personalized PowerPoint for each student as part of this training for to use when talking to RIA groups and investors. Okay, so I got two totally different PowerPoints that you can use and you can customize and you can brand for your company so that you can go out and, and introduce your company to RIAs and real estate uh, agents and things of that nature. Whatever your niche is, okay, we want to help as many people as possible. We want to cater to what your strengths are and these are these are a lot of what we've found over the years but these are some people's strengths so we want to cater to that or if you've ever wanted to do a presentation to a RIA group and you didn't know what to say now you know what to say if you've ever wanted to do a presentation to a realtor about notes and you never knew what to say now you know what to say <clears throat> module number nine learn how to contact and assign a contract and assign a mortgage note legally so you avoid any future legal issues. Okay, there's a right way and a wrong way to do this. I'll just leave it at that. Module number 10, how to use my private 2015 note buying profit software to calculate three different offers on newly created notes. I didn't have a chance to show that to you today. Okay, this is just another software in the training that you get, and you get for free. There's no monthly fees. There's no membership fees or none of that stuff. It's yours. Module number 11, how to create simultaneous closings that are legal, Dodd-Frank compliant that will sell in the market space. In place. Module number 112, or 12, how to price a deal to offer a seller over 102% of their unpaid principal balance. This works on any note trade. Okay? I'm going to show you how to do that. You thought what I showed you today was pretty impressive. Wait till you get to this module. We're going to show you a whole lot more. Module 13, learn the seven different types of note trades that are in the marketplace which and which ones will make you money. Okay, which ones will make you money. Module 14, learn how to stack a file and do due diligence on any file so that you can close a deal in 10 days or less. Okay, you want to close deals quick, quickly, I'm going to show you how to close deals quickly. Okay, now you can choose to do it or not to do it, but... I'm going to show you how to do that if, if that's something you're, you're passionate about. And then number 15, how to set up your company, LLCs, LLPs, S-Corps, C-Corps, etc., to create the best tax structure for you and your family. My personal CPA will show you how to do this on the webinar. I'm actually going to interview my CPA so that you know what's the best way to set up a company for your benefit, okay, for your benefit. We all have different benefits. We all have different positions in life. We're all at different places in life. I'm going to show. I'm going to interview my CPA, and you can call him after the call. You want to talk to him about your personal uh, situation? Feel free to do so. Okay, he's a great guy. He loves helping people, as a, you know, in, in helping them get off and get get pointed in the right direction. He's done wonders for our business. Wonders for our business. Okay. Here's some extra bonus, bonuses that are included for elite members. Number one, you get 365 days of unlimited email support. Number two, you get step-by-step -step instructions for learning how to flip notes. Okay. Number three, I'm going to show you how to cherry pick only the best deals to keep for yourself if you want. Okay. You close a few deals, you got some money in the bank. I'm going to show you how to cherry pick some deals for yourself. Okay. I'm going to show you how and where to find the deals in your area. Okay. You can, you can do it in your area. You can do it outside of your area. doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to give you the deal analysis templates and forms for closing deals. Okay? I'm going to show you how to use my magic book that will get you into any title company. Okay? I have a book that I use that opens doors left and right to working with title companies. I'm going to show you how to use my personal pre-crafted power emails that will have sellers calling you every day. Okay? I'm also going to show you how to accurately analyze a deal for maximum profits. And I'm going to show you how to gain access to unlimited funding for your deals. Okay, 
here's the thing that I learned early on in the business. If I could find deals and I had capital backing me, that equaled a payday. It's that simple. My deals, their capital equals payday for me. I didn't have to have my own money. I didn't have to have my own lines of credit. I didn't have to have any of that stuff. I grew into that. Okay? As I mentioned earlier on in the call, people aren't going to give you lines of credit to buy real estate notes unless you have transactional history. They want to know because this is such out of the box thinking. They want to know that you've gotten some some deals done and you've got some deals under your belt. Typically, it averages around 10 to 20 deals. You get 10, 20 deals below your belt, under your belt. Now you can start thinking about your own lines of credit. Plus, here's the thing: you're going to want that. Okay, you're going to want to learn and earn at the same time. Once you get comfortable with the business, you get comfortable with the paperwork, you become knowledgeable about the paperwork, now you can go out and get your own lines of credit, and you can manage those lines of credit intelligently for financial benefits for yourself. I got a bonus here, another bonus. I'm going to give you a copy of my 2015 Note Buyer Directory. I'm going to give you a copy of my recently updated Note Buyer Directory so that you will have access to a lifetime of unlimited Note Buyer capital. This is like having an unlimited checkbook to buy notes. The value on this is $497. Okay? These are players in the industry. That's simple. What is the investment? Well, as you can see, that making money with mortgages elite is packed with a ton of new tools and resources, valued at well over $1,200, I'm sorry, $12,140 to grow your business to an easy six figures this year. Okay? I've just spent time showing you you know how to find deals, where to find deals, how to how to work with a seller, how the numbers work, how they look. I've done all of this stuff so to help you grow and build a six-figure business. If you're not doing six figures a year in the note business, you're doing something wrong. Okay? I'm not here to be mean. I'm just saying, if you're not doing at least six figures a year in this business, you're doing something wrong or you've learned something inaccurate or, or You've learned something wrong. You're applying it wrong. So I don't know what it is, but it's something for you to think about. If you're not earning six figures a year in this space, so what is the investment? Well, I originally priced this out at one thousand four hundred ninety-seven dollars. As I mentioned, I only have room to train up a handful of people in this business. So I've set the investment for a six-figure business for a one-time payment of seven ninety-seven. Okay, very simply stated, seven ninety seven. If you're making six figures a year in the note business, you're making more money than a McDonald's franchisee owner. And they had to spend a million dollars to get the franchise. Okay, they spent a million to make a hundred thousand. That's crazy. That's crazy. And how do I know that? Because I have a lot of friends that own McDonald's, believe it or not. I have one, one family, they own like nine McDonald's as a whole. But they leverage everything. They borrow money, they leverage it, they do all this stuff because of the success ratio behind it. It's like 96%, 97% of all McDonald's you know, succeed. And that's, a, that's a great ratio, no doubt about it. But it's a million-dollar investment. So here's a $797 investment, and that's it. Okay, you go to www.mmwmelite.com. -E Let me say that again, www.mmwmelite.com. Go there. You'll, you'll read all the, all the modules are there and then what, what it is we're going to be covering again, the bonuses, all that fun stuff, the testimonials are there. Go down to the bottom of the page. There's a, a pay button. Click on the pay button, and we'll get you signed up. It's an on-demand training, so it starts right after you sign up. Okay. There's also a two-pay option on the page as well. Okay. If 797 is not in the budget right now, check out the two-pay option. Okay. I think that'll be more budget-friendly if you're if, if that's where you're at. Costs you a little bit more, but it's it's two-pay. So, I like giving a double your money-back guarantee. Okay, what I mean by that is I got two guarantees. I got straightforward industry guarantee 
30-day unconditional guarantee. You don't like the training, just ask for your money back. I'll give you your money back. No questions asked. Okay, that's straightforward. But then I got I got what I call my part two guarantee. Okay, my 100% guarantee is that to you is that I will pay you back the cost of the training on your very first deal. So you love the training. You're implementing the information. You're taking action. You're you're laying out your business plan. You're you're sourcing deals. You're finding deals. You and I are starting to, to close some deals together. When that first deal close closes, I'll pay you back the seven ninety seven plus whatever your fee is. So if your fee is forty five hundred dollars, it's forty five hundred plus seven ninety seven. That's what you get back as part of the training. Okay. So I've got a double guarantee. And by the way, you get to keep the training. So as I say here on the bottom, you invest in the training, follow my instructions, bring me a deal. I'll close you, I'll close the deal for you and pay you your fee plus 100 percent of the cost of this training. This equals zero risk for you. Same thing applies for the two pay option. Okay, it doesn't matter if you go two pay or one pay, you get the cost of the training back, plus whatever you make on the deal. Okay? I don't know where you can get a better guarantee. So there's zero risk. Why is it that I do that? Because there's a barrier to entry. Okay? There's a barrier to entry, and I only have enough time to work with a handful of people. Okay? I could offer this training for free, and people could bring me deals and all this other stuff, but my phone would blow up. I'd drive myself crazy. There wouldn't be enough hours in a day, and it would be just chaos all the time. I don't want to live in chaos. So I'm looking for a handful of elite people that are very hardworking, that want to create a six-figure business model that I can support in doing so. And I was really transparent. You can't say that I wasn't transparent. You can't say that I wasn't honest about the motivation behind it. But see, also in that motivation, I want to say, hey, if you're willing to do the work, not only are you going to get your, your investment back, you get to keep the training, and you get whatever fee you make on the deal, your first deal, whatever that is, it is. That's the beauty of it. So now all of a sudden, you close that first deal, you just earned and learned at the same time. No money out of pocket, no, no capital requirements, just simply, what is it that you want to do? Mind you, this is a $10 billion industry just from last year. This year, it'll probably be closer to 11 or $12 billion. And the fact that I did 53 deals and did $248,000 in business last year alone, you're only talking about three to four deals a month as a whole. So we're not, you know, this isn't some monumental task that is like a huge Mount Everest to climb. And... Once you, once you break that $150,000 barrier, now you're in the top 4.7% of income earners in the U.S. based on the U.S. Census. Okay? So how do you sign up? Last chance. Here you go. You can easily sign up today by going to www.mmwmelite.com. Last chance. That's your, that's your opportunity. I'm only doing this for a handful of people. Once we met our our number that we that we want to work with, we're gonna we're gonna turn this off. We're not gonna take anybody else in. I don't know when I'm gonna reopen this up again, okay? Because it does take a lot of time. That four hundred and ninety-seven dollars doesn't hardly cover the amount of time that I've invested in, in creating the training and the amount of time that I invest in working with my students. Okay? That doesn't hardly cover. That is simply a commitment to take action. Okay, that's an action commitment. And I could easily make it a, a two or three or four thousand dollar commitment, you know, very easily. But my point here is this I've found that there are a ton of good people who just can't afford three and four and five thousand dollars at a pop. And I want to work with good people. At the end of the day, I want to work with good people. So I make it affordable, I make it a barrier to entry. I don't like giving my stuff away for free because that devalues what I do. But I want to make it affordable. I want to make it a barrier to entry. But I also want to work with those people who are wanting to take action. And I give what I consider the industry's greatest guarantee, best guarantee in the market space, 
you get the traditional 30-day guarantee. And beyond that, when you close your first deal, you get you get all your money back on that as well, plus whatever fee you make on it. So that's my incentive for you when I said, hey, I'll give you you know 14 people that you can go to and that you can reach out to. But and you can certainly do that, but that's the incentive to bring a deal to us and close a deal to us. Why not? You scratch my back, I scratch yours. Where else are you going to find that in the industry? Where else are you going to find that in the industry? It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist because a lot of the other, a lot of other trainings as a whole are fear-based trainings. What I call fear-based trainings. I mean, they just want to, they want to capture your money. They want to take your money, but they don't want to support you. They don't want to, they don't want to talk to you. Just give us the money. Here's your training. Leave us alone. Here's the simple truth. You call our office. I'll answer the phone. Why? Because I run a business. I run a company. Hey, we're here to run a business. That's what we do every day. And people will test me on this. And that's fine. Call the office. I'll answer the phone. If I'm not, if I don't answer the phone, leave me a voicemail and I'll return your call. Okay? That's just who we are. That's just what we do as a whole. So with that being said, I want to thank everybody. One last chance. Here's your last opportunity. Go to www.mmwmelite.com. Sign up. You'll see the page there. You'll see all the modules listed. You'll see the testimonials. You'll see the, the purchase button, uh, the take action button at the bottom. Click on the button. Get you signed up. We'll get you in there in the on-demand training so you're up and running uh, in the shortest amount of time possible. We want to see that happen. We don't like things taking extra long. There's no reason for that. We've eliminated all that kind of stuff. So that it's a take action on demand training. Okay. That being said, I want to thank everybody for listening and spending some time with me today. Um, once again, go to www.mmwmelite.com. Um, sign up, take action. It's limited. I will be closing it down. I guarantee you that. You know, I've been honest with you here today. I'll be honest with you about closing it down too. So it can't be can't be out there forever. But uh, those that get in there, I, I'm looking forward to working with you guys um, and getting you up and running, getting you up and running, making you part of that 4.7% of the, of the U.S. population that makes over 150 grand a year. Looking forward to that. So that being said, thank you so much for spending time with me today. Thank you so much for uh, listening to what I have to say. And I look forward to working with each and every one of you. Have a great day. Have a blessed week. Take care. God bless. Bye now.